before you reach the champion's gauntlet of Dorman. To even get close to that wave of bouncers, you first have to make it through eight actual bouncers, like literal NPCs who stop and ask for your ID, making sure your age is over 10 and your badge count is over 8. And if you don't have the dollar to just go on Etsy and buy an 8 pack of pins for yourself, you're gonna have to go to every area of your country and beef with the biggest meanest, scariest member of those ends. And unlike the champions or Elite Four, the only way to properly judge each of the gym leaders is to know what they're like at max power with full teams. Can't go about comparing borderline Elite Four level squads to teams like like Faulkner's, cause at his worst, the guy has a team that looks like the save battery in his crystal cartridge never worked, has to reset the game every time from scratch and scrape together the quickest team he could find in the Violet City car park. So the way I'm going about the gym leaders is as if you face them like it's the last badge you have to get, just like in Origins. If you found Brock last, you can't walk in expecting to finesse yourself a badge by smashing the fire alarm on. Eighth badge Brock is gonna be coming at you with golems, tyranitars, the womps. If it's hard and only edible by Gorons, it's getting weaponized in Brock's dungeon. It's a different level when the gym leaders aren't pulling their punches because your badge collection's a bit lacking. To be fair, you could just pretend you're like, Oh, oh yeah, nah, nah, I've already just got me first one. You go easy on me. Based on rematches, remakes, whenever they've made an appearance. As long as it's on brand for the trainer. Like if aliens invaded and for some reason Brock was the one who had to choose a champion to fight for Earth. He has a Tyranitar sleeping in his back pocket. But you just know he'd still choose Onyx. The Black and White 2 World Tournament has mostly sorted out what the first five generations of leaders would probably look like at full power. Gen 6 onwards, I'm gonna have to reach into the PC backlogs a bit. Yeah, I'm a few weeks shy of Gen. Nine. So what? But I've no clue how they're gonna handle the gym leaders. Could easily be a Kalos situation for all I know, and they're gonna be lost anyway because they all have like two Pokemon each. I'll sort out a separate one for them eventually so they can be compared to each other. But for now, leaders, all of them, are getting ranked. The first of this list is just gonna be Kalos, all of it near enough. So it's obvious Kalos' first leader is gonna be the one with the least amount of tricep meat hanging off their bones. Like, come on, you know, I know the game's unfinished, but man, you're a gym leader, top eight in the nation. I mean, it's only France, but still. At full power, Viola has a Masquerain and a Vivalon. You know, that's the issue. Just, just like too many people these days going about with that camera clout chasing. She's too busy catching Pokemon in 4K and not with the Ultra Balls. So, you know, that means it's all self-inflicted, really. Oh, I weep. I, I weep. Truly, I do. Y you see this? It's the world's smallest viola. Ramos. Ramos. You're, honestly, what, what are you doing here? Jump off, Victory Bell, Go-Go. No, I respect using Pokemon that you just like. You don't care about the power and all that. But I, I don't think your man is even someone who battles in the first place. Constantly armed with the hedge clippers. Don't even think he catches Pokemon. I reckon he grew most of his in a greenhouse. I reckon showing this guy a Pokeball, it'd be like showing my brick Nokia using Grandad the inside of a Steam Deck. A gym specialist of fossil Pokemon, bang a concept. Me likey. Tyrantrum and Aurorus, solid hands in the ring for the gym leader standard, at least individually. But when it's the only two you have in total, Grant's just asking for a rude awakening from old mother nature and find out just how easily she made these two go extinct in the first place. No, she doesn't even need to spawn up an ice age for these two, just needs a quick left to the jaw. Valerie seemed to choose Eevee as her starter Pokemon, evolved it into Sylveon, and then managed to catch herself a more while in Mr. Mime. That's an okay start, but that's it. Start. She somehow managed to finish that way. The Kalos trainers all have teams as if they got the five free Pokeballs off their local professor, and no one's passed on the memo that you, you know you can buy more as well. It's not the- they're not fixed, alright? Ice leaders should also get that rock diplomatic immunity I was saying about Olivia in the last video. The type is so defensively tapped, you should be able to arm yourself with an extra two or three Pokemon. Wolfric having only three is putting him, oh, it's putting him in a very vulnerable position. You could win the last badge in Kalos by walking into Wolfric's gym and laying down a Polaroid photo of Makago like you're summoning Salifer the Sky Dragon. Wouldn't even have to battle him, you just have to show him the photo, he'd be like, alright, whoa, whoa, okay. Hey, well, just take my wallet, jeez. 
So much missed potential with Kalos and its designs. Olympia has the look of a champion, or even better, the leader of our region's evil team. But here she is, just limited to Slowking, Meowstic, and Sigilyph. Lance looks like a bit of a tryhard with the cape, but I wouldn't think twice for someone with Olympia's energy. That zero gravity cape fits that go hard right there. Clement had a bit of potential there. Magnazone, as always, an elite sign. And Heliolisk is an elite mon to walk the fairly polite streets of Kalos with. But clearly, the priorities aren't straight. Look at it, he's saying this kid's trying to invent machines that enable him to run faster. Like, brother. Just hold B. In the Lumio City Tower, you'd imagine he would have got hold of an Ampharos. You know, maybe a bit of homage to Olivine City's lighthouse. But nah, I guess he'd rather go about his business making rucksacks that shoot out weird, juicy Mew 2 hands. The first Gala leader, mostly from the lack of selections to her, would have to be Opal. And Opal has the makings for a very dangerous team. Togekiss, Galarian Weezing, Morwile, G-Max Al Creamy. But she got shafted a bit compared to the other Galarians. Must have had one foot out the door already before saying, All right, all right, be ah, uh, too old for this gym, bollocks. Just, yeah, you sort out the leader and for me. Go on, go on, stand there. Put pink on, that's it. I say it about Lance, but Kabu, literally full kit wanker. Like, he Pokemon battles in shin pads. Sadly, he doesn't have the full six pack, but it's still an okay enough set of five for a gym leader. Torkoal, Ninetales, Arcanine, Salazzle, G Max stops Center Scorch. Not good enough to justify fighting in an entire stadium against. You know, not worth putting the PE kit on for this one. Think I'll keep the jeans on. Melanie's unfortunately cursed by being drawn to frozen water based Pokemon. But here I appreciate that Gala added enough for her to have a completely Galarian ice type team. It was getting boring seeing the Dugons and Walrains and, and the Glalies. Now a big, strong Knuckle Dragon Snowman. Now that I can get behind. Milo is a perfectly calm gateway gym leader. Nice, relatively easy, humble grass trainer to plow your way through. And I'm thankful that it stays that way. And you only have to compete against his Pokemon. Because Milo rolls around hay that weighs over 770 pounds. That, that's ridiculous. That's, that, them vegan proteins are no joke. But in all fairness, that, that is pretty accurate. You'll never find a bodybuilder who'd outwork a proper farmer. Milo could be Ramos sized and still be armed with them HMO forehands. Down in Hoenn, the man wouldn't need the blue orb to summon Kyogre. Could flip it out of bed in the morning himself. I actually rate Pierce as a late game gym leader. He's got some more rare Pokemon from what should be considered a more late game type overall with Dark. It's not a terrifying Dark team like you'd see in the Elite Four, but it's a comfortable tier below. A good amount of wedge for a Dark type trainer who's not a complete unnamed NPC and only gives more fuel to the theory of teams being genetically hardwired. Marnie's just got a slightly, maybe worse variant of Pierce's team. I said this one last time, but here is a legit case of the older sibling letting the younger one get to keep any cards they had doubles of. Although, uh, fair enough, having a hold of that Gigantamax and Toxicroak, uh, maybe I reckon that would balance out having more Pico alone. Supposedly, many speculate that Gordy down the Gala region and his rock types will be champion eventually. That's a big ask, you'd think, with rock types. But it's been half done before with Steven. Although with only five known Pokemon in his possession, that Tyranitar is more than worth the double. And for some teams on this list, the triple points alone. Lenora's team back in black and white isn't too special, but I'm getting them war flashbacks to watch Hog alone, especially knowing what an easy team she has following it if you've got a good fighting move at the ready. It's just that watch Hog being at the ready to do what it does best, pound for pound best handheld destroyer since Whitney's mill tank. But I find it interesting because her team all seems like the seeds are planted for her to be stronger in the future. It's aged surprisingly well in a sense, Clefable, tapping into that fairy type alone, Kangaskhan and Ordino both got Megas, and Dunsparce will one day evolve, and the reign of terror will commence. Sharon, he gets so many Pokemon, or well, obviously, why wouldn't he? Because he's got that Team Rocket spawn, right? Can't seem to take one step down the region without running into him. Shows up every 20 minutes, but purely as a normal type leader. He's not too bad, but it's a bit of a mixed bag. You caught my attention at like Porygon Z, 
but immediately fumbled it with cast form. What weather are you expecting to boost your normal type Pokemon up with? I mean, what do you want? Grey skies with a light bit of wind? Yeah, what kind of dance are you busting out to pull that one off? Are you doing Johnny Bravo? Are you gonna do the monkey? Bang average. No, bang four out of ten side of six there from your man. Burr. Everything about him just seems by the numbers, even down to the name. Goes about his life like, well, my parents named me Burr, so I guess I'm a guess I'm a bug guy then. Like even he doesn't care. Was just gonna have his stage name as a trainer be Bug, but spaced out halfway through pronouncing it. You'd think for someone who had access to an illegal Pokemon with an Excel girl that knows spikes and guard split, each from Shuckle and Pineco breeding individually, you'd think he'd be more about it when it comes to having a scrap. Clearly he's more about the inbreeding than he is the fighting. <laughs> Bryson's team, it's almost like a greatest hits of the ice types. You have a piece of Lorelei, Glacier, Wolfric, Candice. The issue of that is ice barely has any greatest hits from those teams. And the only one out of Bryson's lineup that you could class as a greatest hit is more of a dark type anyway. And Bryson can handle himself. I've never seen a Pokemon trainer who's super effective against his own team. If his Pokemon ever decided to switch on him, all he has to do is give him some of that anime floating about the air Muay Thai. <laughs> With Roxanne, she's not far off Olivia's level, but since she's not a massively underqualified Elite Four trainer, her team's perfectly fine for a gym leader. Definitely one I'd be saving for badge number eight. Give yourself an easy set to finish on down the Hoenn region. A good warm up sesh for Hoenn's Elite Four, seeing as she effectively has the soft, weak to moisture underbelly half of the champions team. Blaine seems to love holding himself back, because how can he specialize in fire, yet have such vanilla Pokemon? Your man's mustache has more seasoning on it than his team. Half of his choices, you could get paid to take on walks around the park. You've got to mix and match through the Blaine files for him to be a bit more diverse. Get yourself that Rotom Heat, Houndoom, Makargo, you know, amp up the Scovilles a bit for him. Imagine your dad leaving home, moving a couple towns over. He's not even that far away. He's like, he, he's like two minutes of pressing up and left, depending on your spawn rates of random encounters. Not raising his family so that he could go and pursue his true vocation in life. Normal types. Norman is a bit of a pushover with Slacking's ability, meaning, meaning that his main Pokemon works part time. But overall, there's enough going on for him to be a dynamic enough trainer as far as the type of Nothing goes. Blissey, Staraptor, I mean, they could easily give you the business alone. Shouldn't be underestimated, but as the type implies, it'll do. It'll do. Skylar isn't looking too bad, actually, since her team seems to cover a lot of bases, which when narrowing down your options from dragon to fire-breathing lizards to fish, and then back up again to freakishly large birds, you really do need to cover them bases, because flying's the sort of type where you can't play about with your choices. <laughs> Faulkner's thankfully come a long way from the days of walking about like he forgot to do the assignment and whacked it out by the bike sheds before walking into class. But Crobat, Aerodactyl, Honchcrow, they do tighten him up a fair bit. And I know he has a Lugia on one team, but this is what I meant when I said on brand for the trainer. I don't care what that Japan exclusive event is saying, there's no chance Faulkner's dead save battery is having him making it far enough in the game to catch himself a Lugia. Good thing he cleaned up his act with that World Tournament X expert team specifically. Before that, even the god of the seas couldn't salvage him. Faulkner better be converting religions if he ever showed up with that Johto leader's team. He's gonna need a good two or three gods minimum to sort him out there. If you thought Miltank curling up into a ball was terrifying enough, just wait till you see that Blissey she's raised up in recent years. And then you've got that Clefable with the fairy type on it now. Even Giraffe Rig, since it's got that new evolution, would only make her that much more of a complete weapon. Sylan unexpectedly comes at you with the, oh, okay, oh, all right, Ferrothorn, superior? Oh, okay, you got my attention. Oh, Whimsicott, that's a decent play for your Novan Grass types. I'm loving the self-awareness. He's like, look, man, I know I've got the monkey. I can't do anything about it. He's my holographic rare. He's the onyx to my Brock. I can't get rid of him, but I'm at least gonna try and repent for my simmer sins. So it's a very half decent, half whatever team. Like his green friend or brother or 
polyamorous partner. Surely also a half good, half whatever team. At least at your first glance of it. Because we all know Simasir is the clear sideman. And it's a big waste of a slot. But you can't let that dictate the whole package here. Because actually, Embor, Arcanine, the Manitan, Magmortar. Okay, nah nah, he's living up to the name. He's packing a bit of heat there. Chuck, he really is just Bruno Light. Which, you know what? Fair play. It's alright. That's why Chuck's in the gym and Bruno's got his own studio apartment down the Pokemon leagues. Even down to the raw energy they both give off. Bruno quite literally doesn't have to flex. He's got that Barbados Slim sort of thing going on like it just does it themselves. Chuck walks around with a barbell on his back. Which you know, you know, it's not impressing anyone. Okay, in fact, we're all concerned because if anything, it's just a shameful display of incredibly poor form, intentional poor form. His back's gonna be retired any day now with form like that. And you know, according to Bulbapedia, his wife's in agreement. She's worried about you, Chuck. He, your body just can't handle it. You can't hang with the big boys. Brock shows you can actually hack it a bit being a trainer who, ironically enough, gets put to sleep by a fire alarm going off. But he spreads himself across the entire spectrum of power for his type. Tyranitar all the way down to rock bottom. I thought with all the times that you go against Brock, he'd at least evolve that Onyx at some point. I mean, anime Brock does, I think. I guess that's the difference between Ash and Red. Red is an antisocial loner, went on with his adventure, so Brock stayed in his Patrick Star apartment he calls a gym and never made any friends to trade with. Bugsy stormed down to National Park like he's Genghis Khan. He took every weapon he could find. Nah, 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 leave the bug catcher net. That thing could barely even contain a fully withdrawn shuckle. Rocks up with that dome they put over Springfield and manages to train up a team of staple bug types. Solid leader for the fact alone that he hasn't got any bug types who are going up to you asking for the nearest exit to the lampshade. Gardenia is lucky the world tournament came around to whip that platinum team into shape, packing some of the least meaty mons she could find. As annoying as Jumpluff can surprisingly be, throwing in Breloom, Tangrowth, Leafeon, that was the better executive decision to make there. They did a good job of fleshing out Erica, because she's probably as good as a grass trainer with a big Cantonian bias is gonna get. You could arrange your team in many different ways with her selections, but it's hard to say what's the most fitting for her, since she apparently only collects Pokemon she considers attractive. Hey, you know what I mean, absolute heartbreakers like... Cradley. Hey, hey, hide your daughters now. Victory bells on the prowl. You know what I'm... You know what I'm... No, no, seriously, get inside, lock the doors, don't answer for anyone, alright, now, get away. Elise's electric team is about where it belongs, fourth gym badge or so. Nothing stands out too hard, but nothing's offending me either. But I'm loving that juxtaposition. Got yourself a supermodel gym leader, and she's not afraid to be seen walking the streets with a vile, freak of nature like Electros. We love a good disgusting product of mother nature who can coil about the lands with no natural weakness. That's what we like to see. With Tate and Liza, their teams are near enough the same aside from obviously the Solrock and Lunatone, Reuniclus and Gallade, or Gothitelle and Gardevoir. Surprised they've never actually done a double battle gym again after all this time. Past Hoenn, it feels like double battles only exist to bait you into getting cold called by two trainers at once. Clara and Avery both have parallel teams to the game versions. Avery might have the edge with that Alakazam and being psychic based overall, but Clara's team, you could argue, is better all around. But they're okay. But all in all, none of you's decided, you know what? No, this whole Clara Avery debate, this is the one to do me in. All right, that's it. Decision's final. I'm going with Sword. Name my mind. That's it. As two former champions, Peony feels much more like a gym leader than Mustard. Peony seems like a prime 8th badge kind of guy. Already got Berserker on hand to celebrate getting that final badge, lethal gym sesh, then straight down to the local. Cheers. It's about time we start finding ourselves with more rock trainers who aren't here to waste everybody's time. Just like Brock, Rourke actually has the singular rock type Pokemon that's relevant. I can actually take him a little bit seriously from Tyranitar alone. The hard hat isn't just a front, he actually does have the lights on upstairs. Aerodactyl as well is more than telling, he's leaning towards the harder side of the rocks. 
Rayhan is a great 8th badge kind of leader, but that's all he is really, predictably dragon based, but it's an interesting dynamic that he's a weather based gym leader. Uh, interesting, uh, sure, but pretty stupid, spreading himself a bit too thin going for every weather condition from sandstorms to sunlight to rain, man even cast forms grey skies he's probably got on him somewhere. Leon must have been loving life before you, the player, decided to step in if Rayhan was the biggest challenge he had in the country. 0-10 record. At that point, who even cares if he gets that win against him eventually? The man Opal decided would be the intern and do the dishes down the Ballon Lee gym. No clue why he decided to drop the potential Reuniclus. Seemed to drop some of the psychic types to go all in on the fairy brand when he could have kept being a hybrid trainer. You know, maybe he's just being considerate. Maybe he had to get rid of it for Opal's sake. It must be very off-putting for B to always be looking at the polar opposite sides of the spectrum of life. Karina, by far the best Kalos trainer. Shouldn't even be associated, just skate on over here, get away from the rest of them jabronis. But it's all thanks to the power of plot relevance. Four elite Pokemon are far better than a very average six pack. She can actually hold up a decent fight even if you've never actually fought her with all four of her known Pokemon. How Lucha, Machamp, Mindfu, which I assume would become a Mind Shao if they actually finished, Gen 6, and the Mega Lucario. She's two well-chosen Pokemon off being one of the best gym leaders going. Koga is a very mid Elite Four trainer, but if you transfer that kind of manpower and put him down in the minor leagues of the gym leaders, he's handling himself a bit more well. Still no clue how he reevaluated his team after you beat him in Johto and he went, you know what? Yeah, this is all your fault. Fortress. And it really seems some trainers are just genetically hardwired to their favorite Pokemon. Janine being the child of Koga, she's gonna inherit a specimen or two from him. Still got Toxicroak and Crobat, but Tentacruel, Roserade, Nidoqueen, Drapion. You know, I actually rate her choices more than Koga in a lot of ways. Broly is a welcome addition to the fisticuff based trainers. He must be on the side of history that sees Bruce Lee as more of a tough guy for the big screens only, because it's nice to finally see a fighting team spice things up and not be reliant on the entire Hitmon clan. At least once he's had the option to branch out past Gen 3. Very far from the hardest fighting team going, but definitely an interesting lineup. As if we needed any more of an incentive to not choose Tepig. You choose that and you're stepping up against Cress, the banger out of this little Doug Trio hierarchy. The Joe Jonas of the lot, I I, I think. I j Nick, maybe Nick, uh, forgive me for not recalling which of the Jonas brothers didn't turn out to be the side man. I'm a 25 year old, fully grown, tax paying man. If only he weren't stuck with the monkey, I think with the name, he'd be getting released quicker than Ash's butter free. Take me less than 20 episodes to erase that one. Get a hold of Gyarados or Starmie instead. Oh, he'd be a killer. Your man Juan, surprisingly good successor to Wallace. He doesn't feel like a complete Wallace reskin, although he might look it. Both eccentric trainers with a fascination with all things guild, but he's got his own thing going on with Crawdont, Kingdra, Politoed. You know, they've got that Claire to Lance dynamic going on. Volkner finds himself being, he's a decent electric trainer. Many fine selections you'll find up in the Volkner cabinet. Help yourself, he's got Electivire, Luxray, Rotoms, Jolteon, Electros, Galvantula. He even has, you know, back there in the cupboard somewhere, I think you'll find Octillery. Octillery's slugging around there somewhere. I mean, I, I guess he can learn Charge Beam and, and he has a few yellow beans all over him. But no, he's actually one of the more intelligent gym leaders because of this. One of the few who's even remotely prepared to swerve you, expecting an easy win, walking into Volkner's gym with a ground type that weighs half the gym's building, ready to earthquake your way to the Elite Four. And then you aren't expecting this, you aren't expecting Octillery there to give you a wee spray. Yeah, you didn't think Volkner would be armed with Octazooka, now did ya? If Ash approached Lieutenant Surge at full power, we'd have been following Ash and Raichu for the past 1000 episodes. There'd have been zero debate sat at that hospital bed. That Thunderstone would have been digested eight episodes in via IV drip. Pikachu would have been waking up out of his coma 50 pounds heavier with a tan. Not like it would have made a difference anyway. Magnazone alone would have made Ash a permanent resident of the Vermilion City Poker Center. 
You look at Price and you probably think, eh, you know what, whatever. Old timer from a calm village lives in a modernized igloo. Ice trainer, walking stick, good combo to be a local down A&E. But as far as ice trainers go, Price has the freezer full. I'd maybe take his expert world tournament team and sub out Jinx and Dugon for Frostless and a Bomber Snow from Heart Gold and Soul Silver. But your man's got some popsicles down in his cellar. Sino piping up and unlocking the genetic potential of half of the ice types they had on offer. Like really, like look at Candice's team. Candice might have the best ice type team going because of what Sino's done. She'd sweep Glacier, Lorelei down the Pokemon leagues, no contest. But imagine her lineup without ice types getting a well-deserved extension. You'd have Sneasel, Hyla Swine, I, I guess just an Eevee. Not like, hold the Frostless, just the Glalie for me, please. And I don't even know what she'd be stuck with instead. Probably Deli Bird. Nessa actually has a pretty great team. Toxapex, Pelipper, Quagsire, Baraskewda, Galissapod, G maxed up Dreadnought. That's a good bit of development going on from her original team of Dreadnought and Dreadnought's post victory meal. No one is living up to Iris or Drayden being the 8th gym lead. Oh, we all know it's still really Drayden. Marlon's only the 8th badge by default of him being the last one you happen to run into. But even so, Marlon still does a good job of taking care of business. He's got himself a fairly strong, diverse set of water Pokemon. So can't complain at him being the 8th man. Having weapons like Gyarados, Empoleon, Kingdra, I'd expect no less from a man who looks like he eats polyrath meat before bed every night. He's one more bulk and cut cycle off his stomach muscles looking like polyrath's face. His next summer body's gonna be able to use hypnosis at this rate. His overall selections are definitely good enough for him to justify being in full gear all the time. To me, that just says he's always ready. He's always looking for it. Anytime, any place. If you didn't take Bulbasaur, Misty was already a weapon with that Starmie alone, let alone when it's being backed by a crowd like this. I wouldn't want to be a bike in debt to her. I'd be on the street shifting slowpoke tails to the underground markets to make up for that one million price tag. Much rather be on a run from the feds than Misty when she's got a Blastoise, Milotic, Gyarados, Vaporeon, Lapras, Jellicent. Man, no chance I'm getting consumed by Quagsire's three foot tall mouth. There's a good range of spooky mons Fantina's found herself with. I've noticed from looking at all of these trainers' teams, Spiritomb seems to not really get used anywhere as much as the others. I suppose Cynthia, you know, she must hold the patent there. And no one wants to risk going against Cynthia, let alone the law. No one wants to be last found wedged into an underground mining minigame. I like that elite status being bestowed upon it. Not everyone's gonna want to spend 70% of their collective playtime in Sinnoh down in the Wi-Fi caves. Another prime case of just how much the Sinnoh region fleshed out an entire type really expanded the lore and potential so much. No more just Sableye teams. Man, you fire type trainers, you, you all can't leave the house without that Torkoal, can you? But Flannery can afford the weird slot or two, because she's maybe the strongest fire type trainer worldwide from Blaziken and Chandelure alone. Got some serious weapons there. A lot more seasoning in the spice cabinet compared to, compared to Blaine. You beat the gym leader because you want the badge? Nah, 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 nah. The TM they have to offer? Yeah, nah, nah, nah. If I beat Roxy, I want to go down the Yu-Gi-Oh route and take her rarest card. In this case, her bass guitar. Damn, I want that guitar. But the issue is, I might have to graft a bit to get it from her because she's arguably the strongest poison trainer roaming the streets. Could easily argue these would slump Koga's team and he's in one of the Elite Fours. Elite Four in Kanto and Johto. That's Unova's second badge. Just on another level, I guess. Winona is looking fairly stacked for a person who looked at hundreds of these intricate specimens and thought, yeah, me like birds. Winona's the only bird keeper who's been paying attention apparently, because I swear none of them have ever clocked the fact that there's nothing stopping them from owning a Gyarados. Man, you can even own a Dragonite. She's easily the best flying trainer purely for realizing this and not limiting herself to those dead save battery birds. B's team is just a murderer's row of killers. Grapple locked alone should tell you to back up slowly before he forcibly 
gives you the limber ability. I mean, he's doing you a favor long term. Be immune to Thunder Wave when there's nothing intact inside you left to paralyze. But I like this fighting team. She's covering all styles for her combat. High flying, grappling, swordsmanship, uh, punching very, very hard. Even military warfare. When I first looked at Watson's team, I thought he was having me on a bit, having a bit of a chuckle, willingly engaging in Pokemons with Plusle and Minim. You'd need another two more of these to power up an original Game Boy. I mean, you've already got a Raichu. You don't need what happened if Raichu learned the hidden ability Mitosis. But it's calm, because he's upgraded from a pair of AA batteries to an entire lighthouse worth of energy. And I see Watson, I see he's been down to Ikea, been pursuing the absolute weapon aisle. I like that Rotom Wash. One mega stone to that Manetric and his team's all set. Pound for pound, the most terrifying team in all of Pokemon. Cursula, Runarigus, Portable Arson, the mouth that leads directly into the afterlife, as well as the tour guide of the afterlife. Looking at this team, I, I finally understand the mask from your man Alistair. I wouldn't be taking my chances with a ghost team like this. I'd be gaslighting him into thinking I was one of them as well. You know, I think the fighting dojo, uh, oddly enough, it's in, it's in the name, man. it's where the real scraps happen. Because someone down that dojo owes Morty a lot of money. At least three Cerulean bikes worth. Not without a motive do you take the Agatha approach and walk the streets with dual Gengars. That pair, Chandelure, Frostless. Your man shouldn't be handing out badges. He should be sending you to the back of the queue down the Pokemon League and make your fight will again. You know, I find it really ironic that one of the easiest steel trainers going is a champion. And the real hard men like Byron, they're still down in the mines. The minor leagues of the gyms definitely holding back when you've only got five badges. Because full power, those Pokemon would be keeping most 10 year old badge cases one third empty. The steel trainers don't play about. Well, why do you think he's armed with the shovel? What, well, you think that's for him? He's got that on hand at all times for the body count defending that gym's built up. I get Mustard as a former champion, but if he had a team even half as good as this when he was down the gyms, he'd still be in the upper bracket. I wouldn't even risk mugging off the condiment of Mustard like I did in the champions video, you know, in case something ever got lost in translation. And he'd be knocking at my door with a pair of nunchucks and some Mustard himself can sort this out the easy way or the hard way. But before you choose, just know, Mustard is Corvo Knight's favorite and he ain't been fed for three days. Obviously, Wallace is gonna be up there compared to the leaders seeing as he got the championship promotion. A paper champion, but paper or not, still gets the penthouse suite down Evergrande City nonetheless. So gym leader wise, he's definitely worth being at the back end of the badge case. And unlike the champions ranked video I did recently, now that I'm actually considering the world tournament, Wallace is so much more of a weapon than Emerald would have had you thinking, because he's got all of that on top of Swampert and Starmie. Now, a lot of people airing the playbook of Big Bertha and her big meaty mons, but not Clay, the man they refer to as the underground boss. And with a lineup like this, look, who am I to question? You know, if he had a team like Burrs or Hallers or whoever's, I'd probably have to take the piss a fair amount because some people can pull off this kind of fit. But Clay, you're looking a bit ridiculous. All right, someone's got to say it. I get it's meant to be a loose fit, you know, for like horseback riding and all that. You know, I'm sure there's contacts about. I'm sure Giovanni could hook him up with a better tailor, but I wouldn't want to be the one to tell him to get a better tailor when he's got a briefcase on hand containing a 650 pound mammoth. Drayden is like if Drake were 30 years younger, so obviously he's gonna be in the elite tier of gym leaders. Your man trains by wrestling with Pokemon. You know the zone Khabib wrestling bears from childhood. He was suplexing Dragons before he was even eating solid foods, which, which I, I don't know if that's still the case in his current years too. His beard's looking to be quite the barrier to entry for any form of sustenance. Not even sure if he has a mouth. This man scraps Hydreigons for fun. No wonder he has the ironclad suspenders on. Bollocks this big. He's gonna be needing all the support he can get. Has to strap his own trousers on in the morning like he's about to go on Space Mountain. And one with equally as large cojones, Iris. Which I feel as though is kind of cheating here. One of the top champions, let alone gym leader. So 
even if you take her weakest possible six, she's still dishing out a high difficulty scrap against anyone here. Both Iris and Raiden are surprisingly even, as it should be since they're both from the same gym. It could go either way since they share half the same choices, but it depends if you prefer a more mixed team or you prefer a team that's pure dragon, Seto Kaiba, tricep meat only. Now, Maylene, weapon, complete weapon, the full package of a weapon, the one Sino gym leader who'd make sure Byron's the one needing the shovel. Because if ever you're looking at the Pokemon embodiment of GBH Assault, it's gonna be this. The only thing missing is Machamp's white vest, his four cans of Stella, and his iconic EDL tattoo on the back of his head. Even if you take Blue purely by his gym leader teams, he might not always have the strongest Pokemon individually, but since he's the only one who's got a mixed team near enough, that alone puts him in a league of his own. Especially if you try it with him down the dojo, and that Rhydon gets evolved, and Tyranitar gets taken out the glove box. Or down in Let's Go when he busts out the Alakazam, Aerodactyl, even Charizard, as much as the Blastoise suits him. Now, I don't know what Sabrina's doing as a gym leader. The skill to job discrepancy is just disrespectful here. She'd be an overqualified Elite Four member, let alone mid-game gym leader. The talent's just being wasted. Might as well give her a hard out and shovel and have her down 14 hour shifts down Diglett Cave. There must be a motive, like not wanting to serve the higher ups of the Pokemon League, like your man Garp being one of the strongest lads going, but chooses to stay at the rank of Vice Admiral in the Marines, so he's not the government lap Dog. Yeah, there must be something going on there. Elite Four, champion, authoritarian dictator. Sabrina could slot herself in wherever she wants. All right, Lance is one thing. I, I don't mind having the crack with him about the embarrassing cape situation because I don't think he'd really do anything about it. He'd probably just walk on, get his meal deal, and he'd be off home to his dragon's den wherever he hangs about but with claire i think i'd be about to find out she wouldn't even think twice wouldn't risk taking the piss with a team like that sitting in her back pocket a top elite four contender a fairly high up champion claire's a gym leader and has nearly the same team imagine having to take out three pseudo legendaries to get a gym badge i'd sooner be making the rising badge in blender and getting the 3d printer to win me it instead any Pokemon is on brand for your man Giovanni. No, no, the man Giovanni has access to any creature he wants. He can just hit up the group chat like, Hey Vinny, go out and steal me the beefiest crocodile you can find. I got some kneecaps that are in need of brick breaking, you know what I mean? But there's just something about the ground type that's especially on brand for him. On one hand, they're effectively hired muscle to goon around for him. On the other, ground is where his ops end up. I don't know how he's not made a comeback. Get the boys back together. Red was never toppling his little goon empire if Giovanni's pockets were this heavy back in the day. Back in 96, one sight of Garchomp and Red would have spoken his first words. Yeah, nah. Now this is the GOAT, the greatest of all trainers. But not just trainers, leaders, elites. Man, you think Leon's the world champ? Your man goes to bed wearing jasmine themed pajamas. I'd believe you if you told me Cynthia checked under her bed every night just looking for Rusty. You know, in case Jasmine were looking to tuck her in for good. Cynthia's lucky she isn't out to take names. Cause jeez, man, this girl's a nuclear weapon with her best. Steelix, Magnezone, Napoleon, Lucario, Metagross, Excadrill, Bronzong, the hits don't end.